Hi, and welcome back to Glassboxed, writing automated Java tests using WebDriver. Today we're going to have a look at using the select class. We're going to see how you would use the select class and where you would use the select class. So, the first thing we're going to do is navigate to our Java test site. We're already on our test blog, so if we just navigate to the footer and click on Java test site, that will load up this dummy zoo adoption test site that I've created and if we go to the adoption page we can now see that there is this drop down box if we select this drop down box it selects new items and that's it nothing too fancy really so what is the select class actually used for well the select class is a very specialized class that is used to help select options from a drop down box such as this the focus of the select class is to allow the user to automate user interactions with a drop down box such as this and and it gives us a couple of different ways to select different values from this drop down so let's head over and write a test for this so the test we're going to write is quite simply navigate to this uh, zoo site so if you like we'll navigate to the home page we're then going to click on this adoption link and then we're going to select various different options from here that's it nothing too complicated so if I create a new class and I'll call this adoption test so I'm going to go ahead and create a skeleton test method first So the first thing I need to do is actually instantiate WebDriver. And I'm just going to import in the classes. first thing I need to do with the driver is actually navigate to our test site. So that's driver, navigate to the next thing we said we would do is click on the adoption link. So let's quickly write a find uh, by ID for that and we'll grab the ID for that in a moment so let's go and get the ID for that see if I right click on that and inspect the element the ID for that is called adoption underscore link there we go so once we've done that, we should then be on this adoption page with this drop down. So if we inspect this element here, we can see that the drop down is inside what's called a select tag. A select tag is the tag given to drop down boxes. So if you were to find drop down boxes on other sites, they're really likely that they're actually inside a select tag. And it is this select tag which matches up to what is called the select class for WebDriver which allows us to specifically code to look for elements inside the select tag. So if we were to expand this select tag we can now see that inside this select tag we have a couple of different options. So in this case we've got a default today, an F day and an F month. If we were to expand these we can see further options actually inside these as well. So we can go ahead and select different options based on the methods that the select class provides us with. So if we go back to our test, the first question is how do we actually write this code for a select class? Well what you do is you 
type in the name of the class, so in this case it's called select. We then give it some name to refer to our newly created select object. So in this case I'm going to call it start drop down and this would then equal a new select. Now inside this parameter we need to pass in a web element and we can very easily do that by simply calling the driver object and then a find element and then passing in some identifier for the drop down. So if we go back and have a look at this select tag we can see that the select tag has an ID attribute with the value of start underscore select. So we can actually pass this information to identify which element the select tag belongs to or rather what identifier we need to use to identify the drop down box on the page. So if we now say driver dot find element by ID that now identifies that we are using the select class and this is where the select or the drop down box is located. So I'm going to go ahead and import this class in. Now if we start using this object here and then use the dot operator on it we can see it provides us with a couple of different methods in particular if you type in select you can see it actually provides us with three different objects a select by index, a select by value and a select by visible text so we'll go ahead and do a select by index first so the select by index takes in an index value i.e. a number and the index value for these numbers so let me just get rid of this for the moment an index value for these always starts at zero so the first element on the list is please select start date which has an index value of zero the one after that today has a value of one the one after that has a value of two and so on so let's just say we wanted to select the value first day of the next week this would be an index value of 2 so if we go in and type in a 2 here what this will do now is once it identifies our drop down box it will actually go in and select the index value by 2 instead so let's save this quickly run this and see what happens so to run is right click run as JUnit test and that's the end of the test so notice that the browser hasn't closed that's because we haven't written any before or after to close the browser and we haven't manually written any closed statements hence why the browser is still open but that kind of serves us really well because we can see what's been selected so here you can see that it actually has selected the second index value from the list i.e. it selected first day of the next week which is the second value from an index value list so let's have a look at what other options this select class provides us with. So we now have another two, select by value and visible text. So let's go with value for the moment. So we can see value takes in a string. Now this value is quite literally a value inside an option tag inside a select tag. So if we go back and inspect this element again and expand it, we can see that it has a couple of options and these options have value attributes and these value attributes have values so value so the first one has a value of default the second one has a value of today and so on so what we'll do is we'll take one at random so let's just go with the last one for instance so we'll select an item from that list with a value of f month which should set the drop down to the first day of the next month so let's do that let's just copy that go in paste that in there quickly run this test and see what happens so as you can see it's actually selected the element we were expecting it to select i.e. the last one in other words the first day of the next month let's have a look at the final one select by visible text which also takes a string so select by visible text quite literally attempts to select an item from the list based on the text here so so far we've been selecting an item from the list based by index i.e. the index value an item is in 
the second value we looked at was selecting by the value or the value attribute of an item and the third one we're going to look at is the actual value we physically see on the page so in this case we're just going to try and select the today value so in here I'm just going to say today and run this test and see what happens and there you go so the test has finished and it selected the today value from the drop down box so in this video we've actually seen how to make good use of the select class in how to use the select class to help us locate various elements or various items in a drop down using different methods provided by the select class now some of you might be wondering why really show this uh, I mean you don't have to well no of course I don't there are other ways to do this but they're more difficult in that if you want you can actually write a find elements method where you go in and you search for all of these options find the one you want and then click on it you can also if you really want select this as a web element as opposed to a select class by ID click on it which would then expand the list once you've expanded the list get all of these items inside another list and then look through those items and then select the one you want so you can see quite quickly that if you don't use the select class to automate drop-down scenarios it can become really complicated really quickly and it's also not very clean using the select class will really help you to select any item you want from a drop-down very easily and that's it for this video folks thanks for watching hey guys thanks a lot for watching my video if you already haven't hit the subscribe button to stay up to date with my latest videos which are released every Wednesdays and Sundays also follow me on Twitter and Facebook until next time ciao